um, you know, just go through and... Your team members will say, Matt, good job on the layers. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I'll show you, there's actually a method to my madness by doing these layers when we get into Illustrator. But as I go here, you know, I'm just making these different pieces and, you know, because you got to think of the character. Now you're, you're kind of sectioning them out, right? You're going to have these different pieces that you're going to fully develop and, and use to be more like an animated character. So you got to think beyond just the sketch. You got to think like, what's behind the head? Where, where does the neck connect? Where do the arms connect, right? So we have this kind of body in the center and I know my head's going to sit on top, but I kind of want to rough out, you know, the shape of this body. So we have this, because when that arm's moving and he's running or he's attacking, you're going to see more of the character. It's not just going to be a, a stat character. And this is, this is strictly for skeletal character design. So when you're doing characters that have more of a, a skeletal look, this, or I mean, not a skeletal look, but have like the skeletal tools that you can use in like Unity or Spine or any of these um, plugins that people have, you, you just want to be cognizant of the character and, and the different elements and that you ha you're going to be able to see all this stuff. You know, yeah, if yeah. you can imagine pieces that are layered on each other as they move, you're going to reveal parts that you didn't see before. Um, so, you know, like, like I said, I'm just kind of going in here and refining this up and I might just separate these all as different pieces. You know, I think this was chest. So all different body parts kind yeah. of come off into a different layer. All you different body all parts. Separately. Absolutely. Um, so we're going through here, making another arm on the side. You know, I'm getting the, the reverse side of the arm right here. So right now with the arm and the chest piece, it looks like a robot. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> does, right? Um, you know, he's a he is a cyborg barbarian uh, <laughs> ninja, so I'm trying to reinforce that. So, you know, I'm just doing the different pieces right here. You ever start out drawing something one way and you're like, you know what, this really looks like something different and then you just take it in that direction? Oh, absolutely. All the time. All the time. You know, I kind of piece them to where I think maybe they work a little better. And don't be afraid to just arrow things around and kind of get it right. You know, I'll just call that arm. And um, yeah, sometimes I reduce the opacity, just like I was doing with that template layer on certain pieces because I'm trying to just get those shapes and define the areas that I'm going to be making. Um, so, you know, as I'm going through here, I'm just making new layers and just tracing all these elements I have. I actually really like this second head I was making right here. I thought that looked cool. Um, so same thing. We'll just go in there and start building out these shapes, you know, building out these characters. And so all these separate layers that you're creating here, uh, you'll import these as separate layers then into Illustrator? Um, yeah, you could do that. You could absolutely do that. And that, that's actually what I was going to do because I think it's going to just make things easier. And the great thing about Photoshop and Illustrator is I can just drag these layers right in and they'll just come in as images, image layers that I can use. Um, you know, as I go through here and just kind of get in the look of this character and what I want him to look like. You know, just defining these different pieces. So making them look cool. Draw out the crest. Yeah. Horns. Yeah, you want to get, you know, just kind of getting that style as I go to. And maybe the style even kind of develops as you're, as you're going through with it. You know, it's, got it's pretty amazing kind of seeing the whole process done. It is something I haven't spent enough time with, so it's kind of a mystery. I know the tools that are used, but to see it actually done in, uh, in person is pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm just going really fast here just to, for the sake of the demo, just to kind of get this done. I might spend more time refining it, but... You know, I want to get into actually creating this so I can see, so I can show you like what I'm doing. And we're going to post out right some of the uh, the code and assets that we're going to be using for the game out on our websites in the next couple of days. Yep. We're going to do a GitHub park project out there, so we'll be posting those details out to our websites. Yep. So yeah, you just want to make sure you go in here and you get all these pieces and if things look weird. You know, go in and just kind of fix them and tighten them up and. I think I wanted to do like a big tooth on this guy or something that just looked different. Big ogre tooth almost. Yeah, right? Almost like an ogre triceratops or something. <laughs> Barbarian ogre yes. triceratops. Ninja Ken doll. Yeah, and you know, your style is your style, right? So, you know, I think a lot of people get afraid or they try to copy other people too much. Just go for it, you know, like make what you see want. See how it develops kind of? Yeah, just just go for it and sketch it and, and see how, you know, make the character you want to make, right? When you were learning drawing, did you sketch a lot of other things, drawings that you'd see? Would you kind of trace over it and sketch it just to try to learn emotions? Or would you just look at it, do by eye or both? Um, you know, I, I think as a kid, I would just draw like all the time, right? And just create all kinds of different characters and monsters and you name it, right? And it would just just go for it and just make whatever I thought was cool. Pretty cool. I was, I was the kid in, in class that was always 
you know, I was drawing when I wasn't supposed yeah. to. Yeah, you know, I was paying attention, <laughs> and I'm drawing, you know, some character and showing it to all my friends, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, we have some elements here. Um, I think that's a good start. You know, we're, I don't think we need to go through the full character just for the sake of time. I just kind of want to show you my process of making these. Um, so for here, this is actually kind of good how we have it laid out. You know, we've got two arms here to work with. We've got a chest piece. We've got another arm and a head. And we want to bring this into Illustrator and actually start making it and, and tracing the pieces. And cool. so we're going to do that the exact same way we did the logo, okay. right, on the title page. So, you know, you save your image out. Uh, you know, always be sure to save and all the things you save have. Save early, save often. Save early and save <laughs> Best often. Best of all time. Uh, you know, Triceratops, Ninja, whatever it's called, <laughs> right? Um, and then... Uh, Very nice. Yeah, be sure to open up Illustrator. Um, and then make a new file. Bring it in here. And we're going to place. Grab the Triceratops, Ninja. Ninja. Uh, was it on the homepage? Or the, I'm sorry, the desktop? There it is. Sure top the spot. <laughs> yeah. And then when you place it, you can actually kind of size it. So, you know, I got this canvas to work with here. Oh, so I will put it in. There's our piece. And then the same thing, just like in um, Photoshop, right? I'll take that in my layers. Oh, if I get my layers right here. And then I'll, they have actually a, a template function in here. So I just click template. That gives me my template. That's your tracing layer. layer. Yep. And then I just go in and I actually start... You know, zoom in on the area I want to start making. And literally with, you can do it two ways. You can actually use it with the pen tool if you want to. Um, I'm more classic illustrator. I love the um, I love the direct pen tool. So I love making the points and actually kind of defining these shapes. Um, but you can go in and just start, you know, making the pieces you want, right? And I just kind of go one piece at a time and I build this entire character out. And so... You know, I, just like before, I'm using the pen tool. I'm always using the pen tool for everything I'm making just to kind of get these shapes. And like when you're in here, you know, the character might kind of refine itself too as you're, as you're going in. You know, you get these kind of nice pieces and just go piece at a time. You know, it, it takes time. It's not something you can get done super, super quickly. Uh, interesting. So you don't do it really all in one shot, all little pieces, just like you do all the letters. These are all eye, horn, et cetera. All exactly. Guys. And, it, you know, I'll, I'll, for example, like the eye right here, right? I'm coming through and then... Maybe I'm just adding like little details on it and different things that I think are just gonna kind of make it look a little cooler. You know, you're just kind of going in here, you're using your tools, you're making the shapes you want, like just different cool stuff. Maybe I'm uh, taking shapes and duplicating them to make other shapes. So I actually wanna make that eye in there. You know, just get in there, kind of place it where you want it, add some, we'll add some little, uh, glass reflections in the eye. You know, she's in simple shapes. Just give it like an animated Not quality. Cool. You know. And the more you do it, and the more you refine it, you'll start getting all these different shapes and building a character with all these different pieces. And I think what we're gonna do is, you know, we're not gonna go through the whole character right now, but just to give you an idea of my process and what I do, I'll finish this up and we'll throw it on the files you can download and then you can actually look at the sketch with what I do with the vector graphics and the full completed thing. And You'll draw it out, export it, bring that image into Unity. And, mm -hmm. and, and then we can use all those pieces and make a character. I might even throw a sample character together in Unity that so everybody can see exactly what I did. Triceratops and then just perfect. Very, very cool. <laughs> that was neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the interest of time, you know, we're going to move forward to 3D creation. 3D asset creation. 3D asset also creation. Also another amazing area. I'm amazed Absolutely. by both 2D, 3D. <laughs> so I think this is going to be really cool. So maybe take us through kind of uh, the overview of okay. creating some 3D assets. Um, yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, I think it starts with the sketch of the characters and what you're trying to do. Um, I don't have the zombie sketch with me, unfortunately, I wish I did. <laughs> but we needed a zombie character done for the game. We needed it done quickly. Um, and I use Maya for everything I do. If I'm, if I'm doing characters for games and whatever, I, Maya, I think for illustrators, is just really, really a great tool. 3 Studio Max is amazing too. I just happen to be a Maya person. I think people are split on which one they want to use, and that's totally fine. Either, one's, either one's great. Some folks in the studio that, that use Blender as well. Some people use Blender. Um, <laughs> Let's talk earlier. Blender is, is very, I don't, very different. I think very if different. you're used to one type of program and you and you, you move to something else. Um, but uh, yeah, from that, um, you know, I, I took some screen caps really quickly of, of just what I was making. So for the zombie character, we kind of just um, we roughed out this uh, you know this little zombie guy that we wanted to use, and this is all done in Maya. And just, you know, to show you kind of my process, you know, I roughed out the general shape of the character and the pieces that I wanted to make, used the tools in Maya to do it. And then from there, you know, just put some basic, basic 
textures on them, right? Nothing, nothing really crazy. Just kind of get these simple shapes and characters. And it's almost like when you're doing something and sketching in Photoshop, right? You want to build these chunks and pieces and then just start kind of tweaking them and making them work for how you want it to work and give it a style. All separate so you can kind of tweak them all separately. Exactly. Like keep all your elements separate. So, you know, when you're working in mine, you have all these different elements. You want to you want to, you know, think about like the arms and the head and keep them all separate. No, that was really bad. Um, <laughs> you know, your head and, you, you know, you want to keep, uh, you know, your eyes separate, all the different pieces separate, the legs. I always separate like my torsos and my legs and my arms. Like all these pieces are, are just all separate and they're kind of so stuck. They all move independently. They move independently, but you can stitch them together if you need them or you can just keep them separate and build it all as, as one model with a bunch of separate pieces. You can combine it all together. Like it doesn't, don't feel like everything has to be, you know, seamed together perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but from that, you know, as you can see, as I start building the model, there's other variations of it as it comes and I'm just, you know, I'm adding details on it. I start adding eyebrows and little hairs, you know, he's a zombie, so he's kind of decayed and he starts to get that look and has a style to him and maybe try to model your, your elements more kind of like, you know, how you would draw a character, like into the style and what you're doing with your character. Um, and then, uh, from there, you know, we also need an enemy, right? So boom, you Here's start pumpkins. Oh. You start, uh, you start sculpting, uh, you know, your pumpkin. And this is kind of just the process for what I would do to make a pumpkin. I would build my pumpkin. I think I start with a sphere and I extrude, extrude, extrude off the top of the sphere. And then I just use booleans to kind of cut out the different elements. So, you know, I'd sculpt like, uh, as you can see right here, I sculpt uh, kind of this mouthpiece out, right? Put it in there, do a boolean subtract, and then just start tweaking your verts as you go. And then I'd make a triangle piece because Pumpkins are easy, right? You're just cutting out basic shapes on them. A lot of the right? same tools that exist in vector graphics, right? You can yeah. kind of add, subtract, Absolutely. cut out. Absolutely. And then you, you know, you start getting the shape. And again, like with pumpkins, I'm just using booleans because we need these awesome pumpkin enemies and I think they're hollow and they have these cutout elements. So as I'm going, I'm doing that. And then you start to actually get the, the character you're looking for. And now, then, when you're drawing this in Maya and you want to see it in Unity, uh -huh. How often do you kind of do that workflow? So Unity will support the .ma files, Blender files, et cetera, yeah. as long as it's installed in the same machine. Well, that's, yeah, that's a great thing about Unity is the, is the cross-platform, I mean, uh, the, uh, was it cross-platform? No, cross-software support. I guess the software support, back-end software support it has. Um, it works with Maya, which is great. It works with 3D Studio Max as well. But, you know, it, it supports those files. So I can make a file in Maya, throw it into Unity, into my scene, start moving it around and even resizing it, going back and forth from Maya and saving, and I see it updating in real time in Maya, or in, I'm sorry, in Unity. That's pretty cool. So it's, it's great for level building, it's great for getting the size of the characters you want. It's, there's a lot of bonuses to having that backwards compatibility. Um, if you're working in large teams that are using multiple uh, versions of, of 3D editing, always save as like OBJs or FBXs so everybody can access them because if one person's using Maya and somebody else is using 3D Studio Max, it can be kind of a headache if other editing needs to be done. But if it's just a Maya only team, go for it and just use Maya files. I mean, uh, that works. Or if it's a hybrid team, you know, go for more of the FBX OBJ approach. FBX OBJ. I noticed a lot of things that come down from the Unity Asset Store come down as uh, FBX or OBJ yep. that you pull down. Yep. And those are just file formats that contain, uh, FBX can contain model data in there, FBX can can contain, I think, up to five animations inside of there. Yep. So different things you can pack into those file formats. Yep. And, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you really quickly, uh, just for the sake of what we're doing here. There are pumpkin enemy. This was the um, the different files we have. Um, not sure if we have. Uh, there we go. Maya. So when I create an enemy, um, and I do all these different animations for the enemy in the game, we needed all these different things to happen, right? We wanted the pumpkins to bounce. We wanted the pumpkins to bite and attack the player. We wanted the pumpkins to get hit. You know, uh, idle, do cool like little things when they idle. Um, I, I, you can do two different things. One, you can put all those animations on one giant timeline within Maya or 3D Studio Max, and then in Unity, actually go through and, and sequence out all the different animations. Tell it frame one to 40, is this animation? Exactly, you can, on is exactly. I, for me, I, I think that that just takes too long. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also like to, for me, I just like to keep things organized and have the separate files when I need them. Um, there's bonuses and drawbacks to both ways of doing it. Um, but for me, I like to just create a file and then create the different animation files as separate projects, basically. So if I need to edit a particular animation, I can just open the file, go in, edit it, save it out, done. I don't have to go in and re, you know, redo all these different animations and stuff. So if you were to do something like, I don't know, a tombstone. <laughs> a tombstone? If you were going to do something like a tombstone in a 3D tool, how, uh, like, what would be your process to start it out? What, would you, what kind of shapes would you start with? Um, 
So for a tombstone, I would, well, we can kind of look at what we did in the game, right? Um, do we have the game here or do you have it? Game is on this one. I could actually okay. load it up on here real quick. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't look 